Paradise Float Spa. I understand this is your first float coming up, so you probably have a lot of questions about what to expect. So I'd like to go over a couple of those things. Um, so before your first float, there are a few things to, to consider. Uh, you don't want to dye your hair um, because that could leach out into the water. If you can use a, a white towel after a shower and nothing comes out of the, on the towel, then we're all good. Um, you don't want to shave right beforehand because it might irritate your skin if you have any nicks or cuts. Um, and you want to eat about an hour beforehand, so a light meal, um, so you're not too full or too hungry. A growling tummy in the tank is very distracting. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, you do not need a bathing suit. Um, as you can see on my shirt, we do like to float naked. Um, you're in a perfectly private environment. Um, so no worries about that. A bathing suit is just an extra stimulus that we're trying to remove all external stimulus. So don't need to worry about bringing home a wetsuit. Um, and let's see. So um, we have three different float suites. Um, this is one of them that we're standing in. Um, and so when you come to your float, uh, the very first place you're going to want to stop is the restroom. Um, you know, before you jump in that warm water, highly recommend it. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to come into one to your float suite and you're going to lock the door. Um, then you're going to take a quick tepid shower, uh, not too hot, maybe even in a bit of a cool shot. Um, and at this point you can use shampoo and uh, body wash, but no conditioner. We're trying to get rid of any oils off your hair or skin so that way you can absorb that magnesium even better. Um, and then you do want to dry your face off. Always go in with a dry face because if salt water finds fresh water, it'll follow it, perhaps climb in your eyes, and that will sting. Uh, if you do get any salt in your eyes at some point, you can just jump out and rinse off with fresh water and that'll stop it. I do recommend a, taking a small towel and just hanging it on the inside of the handle inside of the tank. That way if you get an itch on your face, you can use that to do your salty hands. Um, we do provide earplugs. If you'd like to use them, just put them in before you get wet, before the shower even, because they don't stick well in wet ears. Um, if you choose not to, or one falls out or whatever, just be sure to rinse your ears out real good under the shower afterwards, to, just to remove that residual salt. Um, we do have a little A and D packet that you can use um, in case you have a little nick or cut. If you um, forget that you have one, you're gonna find it as soon as you get it. Um, but it'll just sting for this second and then start healing. Um, so that's cool. And let's see, so you cannot drown. You could fall asleep. If that's where your body wants you to go, just relax into it. It's the deepest sleep you can imagine. People can sleep in there for hours. It's crazy good. Um, but just because I tell you you cannot drown does not mean your subconscious is going to believe me. Okay, so your subconscious is, its job is to look out for danger, keeping you alive. It's all good. Um, but given that the water level is so close to your breathing apparatus, there may be a little trust issue as far as your, whether your head is supported. You could just lift your head up a tiny bit. Consciously, you may not even be aware of doing it, but it can create neck strain. Uh, so we don't want that. Two ways to overcome that. One way, you can intertwine your fingers like this, Hold behind your head five, 10 minutes. Eventually your arms are gonna relax, you'll be jelly. <laughs> There's no more strain. Uh, the other way is to use one of these halos. So this, you just put behind your head with the notch to your neck. Just provides some flotation for your head throughout the float. Um, you can try it. If you don't like it, you can move on. I mean, this is, your first float is really considered a discovery float. Um, so they've shown that it normally takes like three floats before you really get the hang of it. The newness is out of the way. So you can really sink to that nice meditative state. So I consider this a discovery float, <laughs> your very first one. You're going to be figuring out where do you like your arms. Um, and you might do the wee four year old wee kind of <laughs> thing. Um, and you're going to be figuring out how to not make the rookie mistake of getting salt in your eyes. And, how to stabilize yourself without bumping into all the walls and different things like that. So, so yeah, so I say try the halo and if you don't like it, toss it and move on. Um, and so this is your float room. In the float room, you'll notice there are three controls. 
uh, a red button to that's all by itself. Um, and that button is called, considered a panic button to alert me at the front desk that I need to panic. Um, and then there's two other light switches. Uh, they just push on, push off. So the top button controls the stars and the bottom button controls both the bottom lights and the lights out here in the suite. That one's connected. So if you do turn off both of those lights with this door closed, whatever you see will be coming out of your own head. Now, Paradise Bloodstone Spot takes no responsibility for that, um, but we love to hear what the stories are, so um, it's fun. So, um, you are in charge of the lights, completely in charge of the lights. Um, you can leave them on if you want. Of course, the goal is to go total dark, So, um, but do that at your own pace, whatever makes you feel comfortable. I want this to be a safe, comfortable environment for you, <clears throat> not one that you're panicking or freaking because the lights are out or whatever. No, you've got the control. If you feel a little bit uh, worried, you know, this door opens quite easily. You can just push it open a little bit, get some air, um, and recognize that you're not trapped and, uh, and go back to floating. So you've got that. So you are in charge of the lights, like I said, and I am in charge of music. So what I normally do is I play music for the first 10 minutes, just to kind of ease you into the float and then it fades to nothing. At that point, uh, you're gonna start hearing your breathing sounds, your heartbeat, uh, maybe some digestive noises. Uh, some people can even hear their eyeballs blink. <laughs> um, but, uh, and you will also be losing track of time. Time has a very different dimension in there. It goes slow and fast, both at the same time. It's very, very weird. Um, but <clears throat> I say, don't even try to keep track of time. Um, I will keep track for you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play music at the very end of the session to let you know that session's over. All right, so when you do hear that music, you want to step up very carefully. You might be a little lightheaded because it is lowering blood pressure um, and your muscles are all going to be nice and relaxed, but the water is super silky, so it could be just a little slippery stepping out. So just take care stepping out and then you can shower off with whatever just to get all that salt off. Um, at that point, you can put, use conditioner. Um, and then you will want to get dressed again. There are some hair dryers in the credenz in the hallway. Um, and then you can go hang out and post float and have a little tea or water and just reflect on the experience. I hope that helped. If you have any additional questions, please just give us a call. I'm at 410-280-1960. All right, thank you, bye.